Welcome to this presentation on job satisfaction. Job satisfaction is basically what it sounds like. What is the worker's affective reaction to their work situation? Do they feel good about their job? Is it a source of happiness and contentment in their life, or is it just a hassle? Job satisfaction is measured almost exclusively through self-report. You just go out and ask workers, how do you feel about your job? An interest in job satisfaction is a relatively recent occurrence. Uh, for most of human history, it doesn't look as though employers, as much as there were employers in our history, uh, really cared too much about whether workers were happy with their job or not. Uh, something that changed all that was a, a group of landmark studies uh, known as the Hawthorne Studies. Uh, they took place in the 1920s at the Hawthorne, the Western Electric um, plant in Hawthorne, Illinois. It took place over a period of about 12 years. And the original intent of the study was to try to figure out what physical things uh, in the workplace could be manipulated to improve worker uh, production. And so they experimented thing, with things like making the lights brighter or dimmer or changing the height of the tables that the workers worked on or in some way or other manipulating um, other physical things in the environment to see how it affected productivity. But one of the things that ended up finding out was that the workers' feelings about their work dramatically affected their behavior. And this was new uh, because up until this point, they thought that if you just um, you know, paid workers a lot, they were happy, and if you didn't, they weren't, and that a lot of other things really didn't matter when it came to productivity. And this also demonstrated how important actual research could be instead of just relying on the opinions of people in the business world about how what they thought would work. Uh, actually gathering data to see what happened demonstrated the value of research and it was really one of the driving forces between the growth of the field of industrial psychology. And they also discovered that the workers' perceptions of reality were more important than the object of reality because they discovered something known as the Hawthorne effect in this study. Basically, what they found was whenever they made a change, workers' performance improved. If the lights got brighter, the work improved. If the lights got dimmer, the work improved. If the tables got higher, the work improved. If the tables got lower, the work improved. What seemed to be going on here was these workers had fairly mundane jobs and they uh, didn't get a whole lot of joy out of just doing the work itself. But in the Hawthorne studies, they got separated from the rest of the workforce and were put in this cohesive little work group, and they felt special. People were paying attention to them, asking them questions, and this changed everything. Um, and because people felt special and they felt like their work mattered and that they were being observed, they always, in response to manipulations of the environment, uh, kind of stepped up their game. And that's what the Hawthorne effect is all about. That any change leads to an improvement um, because people are aware that they're being observed while that change takes place. Traditionally, studies had shown that people uh, were generally quite satisfied with their jobs. Uh, up until the early 2000s, it was not unusual for studies to show that about two thirds of workers in almost any industry expressed high level of job satisfaction. Uh, it has dropped noticeably since then, so now it's hovering around 50% of workers rather than two-thirds that express high levels of job satisfaction. So clearly something has changed in the workplace. There are a number of uh, what we'll call psychological factors that seem to be related to how much satisfaction an individual experiences at work. One of them is job involvement. How much do you identify with the job that you're doing and feel invested in it? How much of you is in that job? Psychological empowerment refers to how much control or autonomy you feel you have on the job. Uh, do you feel like you have any say over how the job gets done? Or do you feel like you're completely at the mercy of other forces and you're just this cog in the machine. In other words, how meaningful is the work that you're doing? 
Organizational commitment matters. Um, how much do you identify with the company and its goals? If you really care about the company and you feel like you're part of the team, uh, you're more satisfied. Perceived organizational support is important. Uh, do you think the company cares about you and treats you fairly or not? Employee engagement. How enthusiastic are you for the work that you do? In other words, how much fun is it? And does the job meet your expectations? If you go into a job expecting the job to be kind of boring and not terribly rewarding, your job satisfaction might still be very high uh, because you didn't expect it to be anything else. Uh, people tend to have lower job satisfaction when they had high expectations for a job that then uh, don't come true. There are also a number of other factors that influence an individual's level of job satisfaction. The size of the organization matters. Uh, it's pretty consistently shown that uh, people who work in small organizations tend to have higher job satisfaction than people who work in larger organizations. And part of that is that it's just easier to identify with, feel committed to, uh, feel recognized in smaller organizations as opposed to bigger ones. The personality of the worker is also very important. Uh, people who are high in self-esteem and also have an internal locus of control seem to have higher job satisfaction than people who don't have those qualities. I think you all have a good sense of what self-esteem is about, but let me just review what internal versus external locus of control is. A person with an internal locus of control feels as if he or she has some control over things that happen to them. Um, if good things happen, it's because they worked hard to get them. If bad things happen, they deserve the blame, but they feel in charge of things. A person with an external locus of control is much more likely to feel like they are at the mercy of fate or powerful other people or some force beyond their control. So if you have high self-esteem and an internal locus of control, you probably feel better about your job as well. There's also a, a type of person that uh, probably all of us know, at least one of them. Uh, they're just inherently dissatisfied with everyday life. We can refer to them as chronic gripers. Nothing is ever good, and they're always bitching about something. Well, not surprisingly, uh, if people are unhappy with almost everything else going on in their life, they're probably going to be unhappy with their job as well. So it shouldn't be surprising that people who uh, show this pattern of personality tend not to be very high in job satisfaction. Another thing that matters is how well your needs and personality match the characteristics of the job. So a job might be perfectly fine for some people and not very good for others just because there's a mismatch of what the job requires and what you bring to the table. So having a good match between you and the job matters. Age is also a relevant factor. Um, older workers are usually more satisfied with their job than younger workers are. And I think there are a lot of reasons why that might be the case. Uh, first of all, older workers often have better jobs than younger workers. They've been there longer, they've gotten promoted, they make more money, so they probably have better jobs, whereas the new workers are doing the less desirable work for lower pay. But there's also sort of a self-selection process. If somebody is older and has been with a company for a while, it's because they like it there and they're satisfied, and the dissatisfied individuals have left and moved on to other things. Whereas for younger workers, that's still being sorted out. So you have a lot of uh, dissatisfied people who aren't good fits with the company still working there, whereas that may not be the case for older workers. Younger workers tend to place more emphasis on intrinsic motivators. Uh, we'll talk about that a little more in a bit, but these are the things about the work itself being interesting and rewarding and important. Older workers are, are more likely to uh, value extrinsic things like a good salary, good health insurance, good retirement benefits, and so on. And the amount of work-related stress that a job entails is a good predictor of satisfaction. Not surprisingly, people in high-stress jobs tend not to be uh, as happy as people in low-stress jobs.
So while we're mentioning uh, extrinsic factors in job satisfaction, here are some of the others. Uh, these are things that uh, people value in jobs, but it doesn't come from the nature of the work itself. Uh, being recognized for achievement, having a high status job that other people think you're doing something important, having good pay, having opportunities for promotions, having job security, not always being afraid of being fired, good fringe benefits, good working conditions, being satisfied with the people in the organization, the supervisors and coworkers. All of these things can make a job more satisfying, but they aren't directly related to the actual work you're doing. There are other things that kind of come along with the work. So what about money and job satisfaction? In my classes, uh, when I ask my students to kind of list the things that are gonna be really important to them in their first job, uh, money is usually pretty high on the list. Um, does this, is this something that we find in studies across the board? Well, studies are relating pay to job satisfaction. Find that pay is usually moderately important, but it's almost never the most important thing, regardless of the type of job that the person's in. I think um, psychologically money matters more than it really ought to. Uh, pay is important because it can be a symbol of success and esteem. It's the easiest way to keep score. So if you can talk about how much money you make, how big your salary is, that's a way of assessing in a quantitative way how good you're doing, how successful you are, how high your status is. And if you're unhappy at work, it's easier to articulate and fix dissatisfaction with pay than it is to fix other less tangible things. So if you can get a bonus or a raise, that's a, a, a visible sign of fixing a problem. But if you have unpleasant coworkers or boring work, that's not something that's gonna be easily fixed. So given the uh, benefits of having satisfied workers, it's always amazing that so many bosses can be so bad. Managers seem to go out of their way to do things that are intentionally aggravating. In this module, you'll find some interesting clips uh, that'll be entertaining to watch about um, job satisfaction. A lot of them are clips from the movie Office Space. But high job satisfaction has been positively correlated with um, good job performance, with good citizenship behavior in the organization, uh, with customer satisfaction. You have less absenteeism and turnover. You have less uh, deviant behavior at work. You don't have people stealing from the company as much or engaging in vandalism. And the company is more profitable. So the company has a real interest in making sure that its workers are satisfied. So in this part of the course, you might start giving some thought to the kinds of things that you would actually value in a job and start to think about which ones of these things are extrinsic factors that have to do with the um, rewards you get from doing the job versus intrinsic factors, things that come from just doing the work itself. And so as you look through the lists that I'm about to show you, you can see that some of them, like requiring a variety of skills, are intrinsic to the work. Others, like the status or prestige or the salary, are extrinsic to the work. There's nothing really wrong with caring more about extrinsic than intrinsic factors, but it's useful for you to know about yourself and understand what the things are that really satisfy you and what the things are that don't. Here's some additional items for you to take a look at and think about. and yet some more possible things that might matter for your job satisfaction.